Happy Palm Sunday, everyone. Hopefully those of you who have palms at home have been waving them, or you've been using the palms of your hands to wave and celebrate this Palm Sunday morning. Welcome to worship with the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you are connecting to us through this worship video and this time of connection. As you watch online, if you're using Facebook or YouTube, please leave a comment and let us know you are here and check in with your church family. We welcome all of those who are worshiping with us. We will continue to worship this way during Holy Week, and you can find out more information by visiting our church website, Facebook page, Calling the Church, 215-887-2544, or reaching out to me or any of our staff or church leadership. Again, thank you for worshiping with us. If you received the liturgy for this morning's service via email or dropped off at your door by one of our church friends this week, I invite you to use it as we sing hymns together and also engage in prayer and scripture readings. Let us begin our time of worship together. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Rejoice greatly, shout aloud, let us worship together. I invite you to join me in unison as we speak aloud our prayer of confession, followed by a few moments of silence for our personal confession before God. Let us pray. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week and gather for prayer, although we are separated from one another, turn our hearts toward you. Turn our hearts towards the truth of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that united with Christ and all the faithful everywhere, we may one day enter in triumph into the new Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ lives in glory forever. We give you thanks for your presence among us and the connection we have as the body of Christ. Grant us your grace and hear us as we confess to you now. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keeps us in the knowledge and love of God known through his Son, Jesus Christ, and alive among us in the gift of the Holy Spirit. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. This morning, as our affirmation of faith, we're going to use a selection from the Brief Statement of Faith of 1983. I invite you to join me aloud together in one voice as we affirm what we believe. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the good news. Amen. This morning, I'd like you to hear these words from Psalm 118. The Psalms are songs of praise and lament, hymns of the early faith written in the time of King David to express every emotion we have in our relationship and response to God's presence or even the feeling of God's absence in our lives. Here are these words of comfort selected from Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love endures forever. When hard pressed, I cry to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. The Lord is with me, he is my helper. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. 
You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this. And it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. As we turn to our reading from the Gospel of Matthew this morning, let us join in prayer. Creator God, we know as we look outside at our world, the beauty of your creation is flourishing with colors and blossoms. The world is coming to life with your new creation. We thank you, Lord, that there are these visible signs and wonders that you are present and at work for good in our world. Lord, as we turn to familiar words from scripture, words we've heard year after year on this Palm Sunday celebration worship, we ask that we hear them afresh, we hear them anew, and we engage with this text in a way that allows your Holy Spirit to speak to us and through us. We ask this all giving thanks in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. This morning I'll be reading to you from the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 21, beginning with the first verse and ending with verse 11. Hear these words from Matthew chapter 21. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and had the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread, spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds then went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now this morning on Palm Sunday, it's very different to not be together in this sanctuary worshiping. Usually we would be parading around the sanctuary, waving our palms, our children would have loud instruments, we'd be singing songs that are familiar, we'd be gathered to celebrate and literally have a parade. Palm Sunday in its traditional sense for many modern Christians has become a day that focuses on celebration and procession and noise and this jubilee of making a joyful noise together. Yet today, we find ourselves in very different circumstances, isolated, separate, doing our best to keep our physical distance from one another in order to stay well and stay safe. We need to do this now. But this new reality is still very uncomfortable for all of us. For some of you, you have been living alone, separate from friends, neighbors, and family, now for more than three weeks. For others of us, we've been in our homes with the other members of our households, enduring three weeks of being alone with the other members of our households. 
We've been disconnected from everything that is part of our normal routine. Work has either stopped or changed. School is now being done at home. For those who are going out into workplaces, things are hectic and chaotic. People are not in the usual kind attitude we're used to. It's stressful, it's scary, but we are all in this together as we attempt to live in a way that provides more safety and more wellness for a larger number of members in our community. But it's very different this Palm Sunday. And this entire Holy Week will be very different. We can take this opportunity then to notice that difference. Palm Sunday is a day when yes, there is a parade Yes, Jesus marches in on the back of a donkey. Yes, people wave their coats and palm branches and appear to be celebrating. But we need to remind ourselves what they shouted. Hosanna. Hosanna. Which means save us. We have shouted Hosanna many Palm Sundays in this sanctuary and congregations across the world in church sanctuaries have yelled Hosanna. But it probably means something a bit different now in our current context. We aren't simply remembering shouts of Hosanna. We aren't certainly looking back and saying, oh, people so long ago needed to be saved. Of course they shouted out to Jesus. They were under Roman occupation. They were considered lower class citizens in their own homeland and holy city. Jesus was the only one who noticed them, who cared for them, who spoke to them, who was willing to interact with those who were considered unclean among them. So yes, when they saw Jesus, they yelled, Hosanna, save us. We think you can do something, Jesus. We're glad you're here. So that yelling of Hosanna was a combination of excitement and praise, as well as this desperate plea for salvation. But for you and I, that Hosanna cry, Palm Sunday after Palm Sunday after Palm Sunday, probably has always leaned towards the praise. It's probably more often than not felt like a shout of glee or exclamation or excitement like we're on the sidelines of an exciting sporting event, or we're cheering after our favorite musician has done something amazing and powerfully beautiful. Probably this year, maybe for the first time, feels like maybe we need to yell and shout and chase Jesus through the streets and say, Hosanna, save us. Save us, Jesus, from this isolation. Save us, Jesus, from the stress and anxiety of all the unknowns right now. Save us, Jesus, from sickness. Save us, Jesus, from the falling apart of our society and communities. Save us, Jesus, from economic uncertainty and instability. Save us, Jesus, from food insecurity. Save us, Jesus, from our own boredom. Save us from the emotions that we inappropriately display with members of our household and the regrets of the things we may say out of our own fear. Save us, Jesus, from feeling inadequate. Save us from feeling that we're not getting enough done and we're not being as productive as we always wanted to be. Save us, Jesus. This may be the first Palm Sunday in your life where those words of save us were truly a cry for salvation and rescue rather than a cheering or a parade or an exclamation or a word of praise. I invite you to allow that Hosanna to be a cry for help. Save us, Jesus. We need salvation. Lord, only you know how to best respond and bring us the comfort, the hope, the restoration, and the healing and wholeness that we need right now 
and into this unknown time ahead of us. Hosanna, Jesus, save us. Let that be our prayer. Let that be our lament. Let that be our shout. Let that be the cry of our heart for ourselves and for everyone at this time across our entire world. Jesus, save us. Amen. Our congregation misses one another. We want to be together as a family of God, able to embrace, to shake hands, to hug, to high five, to do all the things we've always done together. Not just worship, but fellowship and pray and study and engage with one another in community. Although we are physically apart, we can still connect with one another through prayer. Our congregation needs prayer now. As many of you are aware, we had a really, really hard week. We lost five individuals very close to our hearts. We have been in prayer via email and text message and Facebook posts and telephone calls. But what we really want to do, what our hearts are breaking and longing for, is to reach out and to be able to embrace. We can't do that yet. But when we do, it's going to be such a joyous reunion to finally embrace, to cry, to smile, to reconnect, and to honor everyone. As we come to our time of prayer, I want to make you aware of the current prayer concerns of our church. If there are other prayer concerns that you have, please share them with the church office so we can add them to our prayer chain. We want to lift up prayers of comfort for the Diebold family who is mourning the loss of Jerry's sister Irene Bauer earlier this week. We also want to pray for comfort for the Krauss family. Nick Krauss went home to the Lord on April 2nd. We ask for prayers of comfort for the Sager family upon the passing of Jack Sager this week. Prayers of comfort for the Webb family. Richard Webb also went home to the Lord this past week. And comfort for the Herman family on the passing of Charlie Herman Sr. this week as well. These five individuals who are part of our church family will be missed. I encourage you to reach out with condolences and words of hope and sympathy to their family and loved ones. We will find time to gather to celebrate each one of their lives. We'll find time in the future when we can safely be together and celebrate them and give thanks to God that he has welcomed all five of these saints into this heavenly home to be comforted and free and well. We also lift up in our prayers, prayers of healing for Blanca. Blanca is Eddie Pantojas' mother, and she recently was diagnosed with cancer. We want to lift up in prayer all of those who are now sick with the coronavirus and those who are in recovery, and prayers of comfort for the families mourning victims of this virus around the world. We want to lift up those who are on the front lines of health care providing not only their physical presence and the gift of touch, but their medical knowledge and above all their endurance to care for those who are most at need right now. We lift up Nikki Fedorowicz, Russell Bogley, Nicole Lucas, Carly Kraus, Lauren Morrell Frazier, Valerie Herman, Vicka Gundelsberger, Pat, Don Wassinger, and all of those who are healthcare workers. We want to pray for everyone in our community at this time of dramatic change. We especially want to lift up those in senior living communities who are cut off from their normal visits with friends and family and neighbors. We want to pray for our students and teachers who are now discovering what it is to do online learning and for families dealing with that change. We also want to pray for everyone who's serving in pharmacies and grocery stores, for our police and other first responders, for those who are still going to work and putting themselves in even more danger to ensure that you and I and our community can remain well. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, on this Palm Sunday, as we enter Holy Week and transition from a time of Lent, a time of patience and pause, prayer and penitence, 
and now shift gears into looking forward with hope to the revelation and the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Allow us in this Holy Week to be fully present, to be present in our shouts of Hosanna, save us, to be present in our understandings of the disciples gathered in the upper room, to be present in the final hours of Jesus' earthly life on Good Friday, to be present with the discovery of the empty tomb on Easter morning, and to be present in the encounters with the living and risen Lord. We lift up to you, Lord, all of those who are hurting, all who are in mourning, all who have lost loved ones, we ask for your comfort for the bereaved. Guide us, Lord, to offer words of encouragement and hope at this time to all who are sad. Lord, we thank you for the gift of eternal life. And we are assured, Lord, that all whom we love are now with you. Lord, be with those who seek healing. Be with those who are healers. Be with those who serve our community. Be with all of us who are home. Guide us to connect in new ways and to feel the body of Christ allows us to truly be the family of God even for this short time that we are apart. Lord, let us find hope that reunion is coming soon, that you have plans for us and for all people, and that, Lord, there is a time when we will be back together, not only worshiping in the sanctuary, but gathered around the table with one another and engaged in life once again with a new awareness of the gift of being together. Lord, we ask this all as disciples seeking your presence in our lives and praying the words you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you as our service closes to sing along with our final hymn. To wave either the real palm branches that you have at home or the palms of your hands in the excitement and the jubilee of saying, save us. But also wave those palm branches and wave your hands, acknowledging that save us now means something quite different. Let us go now with the blessings of God, our creator, Jesus, our Messiah, and the knowledge of the ever-present, ever-comforting Holy Spirit. Amen.